Hello, so uh, today I'm going to cover um, basically a quick walkthrough on some of the things, like the main points on um, doing the flying robot and the uh, swinging robot. Um, so one of them is putting together the robot. So uh, I would create a sphere, make a copy, place it at uh, 100 because I know the default radius is 100 and then uh, I don't know I think 25 is a nice radius uh, for the shoulder and then I need to control drag which copies it again make one for the hand and then I need a cylinder and to face the X direction I want only one height segment and the rotation segments can remain 16. I think a height of 150 and a radius of 10 would be okay. And these numbers are just numbers that I'm kind of guessing. Um, I mean, the arm could probably be even shorter, maybe like 125. Um, yeah, and so, like, say if I wanted to, you know, calculate where exactly I'd want it to be, I could either do two things. I could do the calculation in here, which would be, and I made it 125 divided by 2, and then that plus 100 would give me exactly where I want it to be. Or I could make the cylinder editable, which is this one right here. The shortcut is C. And then I could do shift C, axis center, and I can dock it up here, but it looks like I already have it docked. So and then I would select it. I want to make the X be at negative 100 because this X, the red, I want it to be all the way flat to this side of the cylinder geometry. So I'm going to hit execute. And then uh, if I make it a child of the shoulder sphere there, this x should be at zero. So say had I been off somewhat, it would have been um, off like this. And if I right click on this little side arrow using the right click on the mouse button, that'll perfectly zero it out. So the reason I wanted to place the axis center on this side of the cylinder first is so that when I connect objects and delete for the upper arm, so long as the axis is placed in the same spot on both of these objects, it won't move. So it saves me from having to redo placing the axis where I want it to be. So I know this is upper arm. Um, and so now that this has been made editable, I can take the enable axis button, turn that on. The shortcut is L. And I can rotate it to face down the line of the arm. So E will show me the move tool, which shows that the Z axis is pointing down the arm and the uh, Y axis, which is green, is pointing up and down, which is ideal for setting up this rig. And so now if I want, I can take, I can turn off the naval axis. I can control, drag, the arm to um, to now make a copy and because I edited the axis before I copied it I now have um, the axis facing the way I want it to on, on both of these. Um, another thing I can do to line this up perfectly if you want, you don't have to, is if I hit P this pulls up my snapping um, information, which is also available up here, right? So this will enable snapping, and I also want the snapping options, though, because I want to do edge snap as well. So that means that I can take this and snap it perfectly to the end of the other cylinder there, and I can take this sphere and I can snap it perfectly to the edge here, and let's see. So now I've got one arm, and I have a lower arm, upper arm, 
I have a hand and I want the hand rotated. Since it's not editable, I just have to rotate the sphere as is. Um, I can make it editable if I so please. I don't have to in case I want to be able to parametrically, which is using these sliders to edit it. Um, so say I wanted more or less segments without having to manually do it, I can just use these sliders. Um, whereas in the case of these objects that I've made editable, I can no longer use sliders to edit them. They are as they are. So now that I've made one arm, and I've set it up like an hierarchy with the lower arm and the hand, I can then uh, use the rotation tool, hold down control, and drag. If I hold down shift, like I was doing earlier, um, it will uh, move in increments of five. So I want it to go 180 degrees the opposite way. And then I'm going to move it down to the other side of the sphere. And I probably want to also snap the other arm over here in place. There we go. And so now that I've done that though, my I notice once you, um, I guess, flip the arm, the y-axis is facing down. And so the best way to fix this is just to come over here to our coordinates. And we notice that on the H it's 90 degrees, and that's fine. But on the B, it is negative 180, which means that it's upside down. So if I just right click and zero this out, it points up. And that should fix that for all of that. So now our arm is fixed. And let's do some simple modeling on the body. So I want more segments. So let's say 32. And I want to be able to see the polygons. So let's go to display and NB, which is garage shading with lines, will show me my geometry. So that looks good. I want to then hit C on the body because we're going to do a little bit of modeling on it. And I want to go to polygon mode. And I want to use the live selection. So using the live selection, I'm going to select some of the polygons across the front of my robot. And if I right click, and use inset, the shortcut is I, I can bring in those polygons. And then I have two options. I can hit D for extrude, which is right here, extrude. And I can extrude it in this way, but you notice it comes down at an angle. Or if I use uh, the move tool, E, I can control drag inwards to extrude those polygons in without that angle. Um, and for the bottom, I can use uh, UL, which is loop selection. If I click U, you see this long list of tools that are pulled up for um, these hotkeys. And then L is for loop selection. So I want to select from here and if I hit U and we look for F is fill selection, and then I hold down shift to, so, to also select these along with those without losing them. Um, and that will create a full selection there. And then I want E for the move tool again. And I will control drag these down like I did with the visor. And then if I hold down, or if I click T, T for the scale tool, I can first start scaling. Then I want to hold down shift to scale in increments of five. And I want to reach zero to make it perfectly flat. Now this is my preference. Um, feel free to uh, make this special however you would like. I'm also gonna do UL. I can select this line, and if I go E, I can control drag it down a little more, and now I have another detail. Ah, one second. I want to turn off snapping, which I can also use Shift S, 
and you'll notice that snapping turns off with that shortcut. So now I have a nice little detail on the bottom of my robot. Alrighty, so now that we've done this, mm, let's also make a claw. And I think what I'm going to do with the arm though, um, I haven't renamed it yet, I'm going to delete this other arm because I'm going to still be making some more things that I would like to be doubled over when I duplicate over. So let's make a hand. Let's make the claws. So I can use a tube. And let's see. Let's guess some numbers. Or let's just scale down. Let's eyeball it. So I can just scale it down uniformly and drag it down this way. And then I want to be in model mode so that I can see these different sliders um, to edit the size of this. I want go. I want this one for the outer ring, this one for the inner ring, and this one for the height. And I notice I have a lot of height segments there, so I probably only want one height segment. Or no, let's make it two. And then 16 is fine. Let's make the height some even numbers. 8, 20, and maybe 14. There we go. Alrighty. So I can use a slice. And that'll turn it to 180. And then I can do maybe C to make it editable. And I want to go into point mode. And let's use the marquee selection tool, which the shortcut is zero. I can select these and these points, and you'll see that it selects all of them down the line. But I don't want these inner ones. I just want these outer ones. I can pull that in, maybe not too far. And that can make a little point here. Um, I wonder, let's see, drag it down that way a little bit more. Um, I'm going to select all of them because I think it's still too thick. So I might want it to be shorter still. Mm, more. There we go, that's fine. Okay, so I've done that, and I'm gonna double check my axes still on these. So model mode E, that's pointing the right way, that's pointing the right way, that's pointing the right way, and then we have our tube, um, which is a, f I'll call it a claw. Okay. So we have all of those, and let's do some texturing. So I'm going to add a material. Um, you can make a PBR material or a standard material. Uh, since you guys are viewport rendering, I imagine PBR is better, but um, it's up to you. Uh, let's make some colors, maybe an accent color. And if I control drag a color, I then make a copy. That will be our, maybe our base color, a little bit lighter. Um, maybe a visor color. It's a little darker. Um, so let's say I want to color in the visor only, right? I can go to the sphere, go to polygon mode, and use the live selection tool again. I can select all those polygons in the visor, and then I can just drag the material only onto the selection, and it'll only color in that selection. Now, you remember when I hit U earlier, we had our list? Well, there's U, I for invert. So that makes our selection opposite. So this I want my base color to be. And then if I use the move tool for the upper arm, when I double click on the sphere, it selects only the connected polygons to the sphere. So even though this is, uh, this and this are connected, they are not necessarily, um, the polygons aren't connected. 
but the object is whole. And so I can select these, place my accent color, double click again on the cylinder, place my base color, double click again. Oh, got to switch to the lower arm. Double click here, base color, double click, or technically accent color, base color. Then on our hand, I want to place the accent color. On the claw, I want the base color. There we go. And say for example, um, oh no, we'll leave this. We'll leave this the way it is. But if for some reason I wanted to make this sphere smaller, I could just select those only and scale this down. And I can select these only and scale down just the tube by selecting this specific triangle in the right view, and that would just scale down the radius if, say, you needed to make these changes. Um, so we've done that, and we can then take our claw, and we can rotate, and if I hold down Control and Shift, I can then uh, rotate it. See, I want to rotate it um, 120 degrees. So control and another 120. And the reason for that is because 360 divided by 3 would be 120. So I can do that. Um, The best practice for the claws, I think, would be to first, before you've duplicated them, right? Um, would be to first change the axis to be at the base of the claw, and then uh, rotate it to face down the length of the claw. But now, if I want to duplicate it, if I try and duplicate it at this angle, it'll be strange. So what to do to get around that is to change your coordinate system to a world coordinate system. And what that does is it makes our gizmo uh, work in the coordinates of the world, meaning based off of these arrows and not off of the object. So that way I can then hold down control and shift after I've turned off the enable access button. So there we go. Now we can rotate the way that I wanted, but still be able to keep that axis angle information I wanted to have as well. So I can turn off the world coordinate system again. And you can see that the angle of our fingers is the way that I wanted it to be. All right, cool. So we've done that. And then I'll, now I can go ahead and take my arm and control, drag, 180, and also go to coordinates and take the B and zero that out. So that way they're facing the way that I want them to face. And shift S will turn back on my snapping. I can snap to that side I wanted. Let's turn back off snapping. Um, and so now we've got the robot set up. Now, um, before I, well first I should name everything correctly. So this is my right upper arm, right lower arm. And if I hit the down key, that takes me through all of the uh, names without needing to do um, anything fancy. So down. There we go. So I also want to probably group my claws. So Alt G will make a uh, group everything into a null. This is right claws. And it's probably best to do that with the other ones. Alt G. This is left claws. And the anchor point for that is where I want it to be. Same for the other one. Yep, that looks nice. All right, so because of the way we had everything set up, um, our anchor points are set up nicely. 
And now, um, let's see, I'm gonna do one other thing to customize this the way that I would like. So I'm going to go into point mode. I'm gonna go to the uh, body. I'm gonna select these two points and these two points. And then I'm gonna go T for scale. And I'm gonna just squeeze them in a little. That way I have this cool eye shape. All right. Feel free to customize your robot a little bit to, you know, fit your personality. Um, all right. So this is the body. Okay. So I'm going to then, I'm going to put these in a null. Let's go with that. So Alt-G will just group that into a null. This is for flying robot. Robot. There we go. <laughs> And this is for a swinging robot. And so everything is in there. If I hold down control and click, this opens everything. And if I hold it down again, it selects uh, control. We'll just close everything up again. You can one by one open them. So um, I'm going to real quick get started on the flying robot. So one thing to understand about this is we need to select everything and then open up freeze transformation and freeze all. Make sure to freeze your transfer. Once you've made all your axis edits and everything is perfectly where it needs to be, then freeze your transformations. If you notice you made a mistake and you need to edit an axis or anything like that, make sure after you've edited your axis to freeze transformation again. So, um, once this is set up, I need to make sure to now create the IK chain for my arm, if I so desire. Um, so if I select from the upper arm down to the hand, you need at least three objects for this. So you need the upper arm, the lower arm, and the hand. If you have your upper arm, the shoulder, and the forearm separated as a sphere in a cylinder, you can end up running into issues when using the IK chain. So if you're going to use an IK chain, Make sure that you consolidate the shoulder and the upper arm, which is the sphere and the cylinder, into one piece before you do that. So we'll take from the upper arm to the hand. We'll go to Character, Create IK Chain. What this does is it creates a goal. This goal, when moved, moves the joint. But now you've noticed that it's not quite twisting the way I would like. I have two options. One, I can use this and twist the joint to face the way I would like. Or, proper practice says, what I should do is control Z to before I've made the IK chain. I'm gonna hide the swinging robot so it's not overlapping. And I need to very slightly twist the elbow joint. So that would be this lower arm joint. So rotate and it really only needs just a little bit. So let's say like negative 0 0.05 rotation. Make sure I'm rotating it the right way. Yeah, negative 0 0.05. So just a little bit of rotation. And same for the hand. This will help in the long run, negative 0 0.05. So just the slightest rotation on the H. And it can be more than that, though. Um, I mean, it doesn't hurt too much. Um, so once you've done that, then you can select from the upper arm to the, uh, the hand. So I select upper arm, hold down shift, then click on the hand. And this will select everything from here to there. Character, create IK chain. Then if I move the goal, because I've added some rotation to that a little bit, it'll uh, move the joint in the direction that I set it to. So if I want to straighten this out, I can just pull it taut and move it there. So now to do that same thing with the other arm, rotate and just slightly and slightly again. And then select upper arm, hold down shift, click on the hand. So I'll select everything in between, character, create IK chain. And now if I select the goal and move it with E, same thing. 
it'll bend in the direction I want it to. And then I can straighten this out. And so once you've done that, don't forget to freeze your hand goals as well. Um, I'm going to actually zero out these rotations first, just because I feel like they don't necessarily need to have rotation. Um, as the goal is, information is really only indicated by um, the information on the position. And I'm going to zero out the Y just because I know I want it to be perfectly straight to the body anyway. Um, and same with the Z because I want it to be forward and back perfectly straight. So the X information, 355, nope, 3.5. I'm going to just pick a number. This is just habits. Um, yeah, okay. That's the way I like it. So, and then I'm gonna freeze those because I want those freeze as well. I'm not sure why these are mixed, but that's okay, just freeze all. Um, so that way, if for some reason things end up all wonky and I've rotated a bunch of things and I've you know, messed things up, I can zero them out when I need to. But I did notice something strange right now. My uh, rotations are mixed. And so say had I done all that jumbling and then I went uh, Alt-0, which will zero out my rotations, you see I, I can end up with a little bit of um, unwanted rotation. So let's see what happened here. Is it the hand? Ah, right, we had to do that for the IK chain. So in all honesty, now that I've made this IK chain, it's best to freeze transformation one more time. So there we go. Now I'm going to ruin things. And I can hit Alt-0, and things will return as they belong. And so you have two options for your hand goals. You can leave them there and not be inside the body, and they'll stay where they are and you can end up with some interesting animations from that. Or you can take them and place them inside the flying robot uh, null, and then you can move them again, and they'll come along. This is so long as you are moving the flying robot null, if you have them in a null. If you don't have them in a null, put them in the body and move the body. Either way, that's going to be the best way for you to do that. Um, all right, so that's for the flying robot. I'm gonna hide that. For our swinging robot, things need to be set up a little bit differently. They're not going to be set up the exact same way. Control, control, there we go. So first you need to decide which arm is going to be your swinging arm. And I believe the right hand would probably be what I'm looking for. So I'm going to then take the right upper arm, take it out, take the lower arm out, take the hand out, so they're all separated. And my right hand is going to be my base. So then I'm going to place the lower arm in the hand, the upper arm in the lower arm, and then I can place the body and everything else inside the um, upper arm. So we're trying to create something with a tail-like structure. So that means that um, with a tail, you have a base, and then the rest of the joints follow down the chain of the tail. So in this case, we need all our Z directions to point away from the base. So if my right hand is the base, that means that I then need to take, well, that means first I need to take everything out of the right hand, including the claws. And because it's not editable, I have to manually rotate it 180 then I can place everything back inside the hand, including the claws. All right. Our claws, because they are uh, in a null, I can enable access and edit the axis because a null does have an editable axis. I also need to take the lower arm and do the same thing. And the way that I know which direction the Z axis is facing um, when in rotation mode 
is uh, you can see that there's this blue line um, across this way that also intersects over here with the red line, um, which points in the direction where the uh, axis is facing. So if I hold down shift while rotating these as well, it does move in five degree increments, so that's what helps me get it perfectly 180 the other way. And so I can double check my work by hitting E, and so that looks correct, that looks correct. Um, one other thing I need to make sure to do while doing this is that if my hand is the base, right? One, it's probably best if, if I make the claws the topmost parent because the claws have an editable, um, an editable axis. And so, and then I can take that and move it out this way. If for some reason I don't want to do that, right? I want to keep my claws in the hand and so on and so forth. Even better yet, it would be best to take our swinging robot null and make that axis be right where I'm going to put the tube or technically the cylinder or pole or whatever you want to call it. So it'd be best to put that there. Then I have my hand, then I have the claws, and it looks like I moved these on accident. There we go. Then I have the lower arm, and the lower arm, if you think about it, if it's like a tail, wouldn't rotate from its, um, this end, it would rotate from the opposite end around the hand. And I can turn on snapping again, shift S, and snap it to that side. And I want to take the upper arm, and this would, this would rotate from that side. Yep, lower arm rotates from there. Okay, hand, claws, lower arm, upper arm. The body needs to rotate from the shoulder, then all of this is fine the way it is. Lower arm, hand, claws. Yeah, all of that's fine. And then I can take the robot, and I believe I want this zero to the world, and there we go. Probably on the B, negative 90? No, 90. There we go. So it's nice and rotated down. And you can move this up instead. So, say 900, right? So that way you can place your pole up there and have it rotate around that. Um, so now we've placed everything where we want it. We've changed our axes. And now we can take everything and to make sure I'm getting everything, everything, I'm going to hold down control, click the minus, then click the plus again. So I know that everything, everything is open. And then freeze all. So now all those changes have been made. I'm going to now select from the, let's say from the right lower arm all the way down to the left hand. And I probably want to rotate it on the H because I have my axes set up the way that I would like them. So then you see we get a nice clean rotation. And so I can make a pole and place that. So I need a cylinder. And I'm going to guess like... Mm, eight centimeters on the X, and I did place it at 900 earlier on the Y. Mm, probably thinner. I should turn off snapping, so that was Shift S. And I probably want to place this higher. But then that also means that I probably want to take the axis that, 
is the swinging robot axis. And I probably want to place this at the tippy top of this pole. So I have enable access edited or um, enabled, and I probably want to place it somewhere like right here. That's most likely best for our uh, rotation around this pole. And now, because I've made these changes, I need to then again freeze all transformation. So now I've done that. And because I don't have anything animated, it's not going to affect any keyframes. So we've learned how to make an IK chain. We've learned how to uh, set up the swinging robot, the flying robot, and um, how to set all that up. But another important thing to check is if you hit Control D, as in dog, you'll pull up your project settings and you need to make sure that the FPS is at 24 before you do any animating. And this is going to save you from a lot of things. Um, one way to make sure that this is proper every single time and you don't want to keep, uh, keep editing it, um, well, I'll probably put up a video on that later and that would be to uh, set up uh, what's called a default project. Um, but we'll, I'll, I'll, co I'll cover that later. So for now, that's how you set up the flying and swinging robot um, for animating. Um, I want to say I'll make a separate video. Oh, you know what? I'll cover it real quick. This is just for um, animating the swinging robot if you'd like. So all I need to do in order to animate this now that I've set it up is I have the swinging robot set. I need to do like I did a minute ago and select from the lower arm to the hand. My very first keyframe, I'm probably already going to want it already to be in motion. So oh, that's slightly upwards. Let's say negative 25. I like that. Or maybe negative 20. I won't have it swing as far. Set my keyframe for that. Come to 24 frames and say 20 because I want it to go evenly the opposite way. Keyframe that. And 48. Or let's just do keyframes for two, two keyframes for now. Just the highest point one way, the highest point the opposite way. All right, now that I've done that, I can open all these different pluses and that'll show me all my different keyframes. If I uh, highlight the summary, that'll select every last single keyframe. And I want to deselect the rotation, which is this layer right here, rotation. And then move forward maybe three frames. Deselect the next row, move forward three frames. Deselect, move forward three more frames. Deselect, move forward three more frames. And again and again, until we reach the end. And I believe we've reached the end. All right. So now I've just done this once, this one delay. You can see that the other, the lower arm lags behind a little, which is exactly what we're looking for. Next, I'll go to 48. I'll take all of these, and if I hold down Control and drag this bar, it duplicates all those keyframes. Let's lengthen the time of this to 96. And I might want to drag one more time, all the way to 96. And this will make it just continuous. So if I hold down two and, or sorry, yeah, if I hold down two and drag, that'll zoom in and out on my timeline. And then I can play through this. And there we go. I have a nice swing. All right. Um, for viewport rendering, we set up our keyframes, and I'm going to close this up. One, I can set up a camera from the position I know for sure I want to record in. And 
want to set up a studio. So let's say, yeah, if I hit the asset browser, type in studio, this pulls up the studio backdrop. You double click it to download and create. And then I want to scale it way up. And I want to make sure that the lowest point of the robot doesn't phase through, so that's fine. Um, we can set up a light to create some shadows. I want to make sure real quick I don't move my camera. Oh, great. Okay, I didn't. So I'm just looking through the default camera, so I don't mess with that. All right, and my light was created dead center of the world, so probably want to place it in front of my robot. And I'm going to use Shift V for the viewport um, settings. And I want to go to, let's see, what am I looking for? Effects. There we go. I want to turn on shadows. I want to turn on SSAO. And that should be fine for now. One other thing is to get my light to give shadows, I need to go to the shadow tab and turn on shadow map soft. Nice. And I probably want a good angle on that. Um, so that should be fine. All right. So now that I have that set up, I also want to hit, uh, let's close this, display and A would turn us back to guard shading so we don't lose that. And my light is probably way too bright. So let's go to general and turn down the intensity on that. And I can create a duplicate by hitting down control and dragging. Um, how interesting, it's not working. Well, I can do it over here, then drag it over and then make this an even less density to just fill in any dark shadows. Um, and probably turn off the shadows on this one. Yeah. There we go. All right, so I've done that much. This is my fill light. This is my key light. And I'm gonna look through the camera now. And I probably don't want my studio backdrop. Sh uh, I wanted to make sure that it's covering, there you go, everything. So that should be fine. Render settings. I'm gonna real quick save, just in case, save project. And I'm gonna lock ratio because I want 1920 by 1080. I want the frame rate to be 24. I want all frames to be rendered. And I want to be in the viewport render, version renderer. I want to save it as a PNG. And I want to choose where it saves to. So in this case, I want to save it to 185 tutoring. I want to make a new folder for this. So this is robot swing render. And I want the file name to be really whatever you would like. And viewport render, I want in filter, geometry only. And for my um, effects, I'm gonna copy my effects from viewport. But if you didn't have them on in your viewport here, you could always just turn on the ones that I had, which was shadows and SSAO. Once you've done this, you've done everything you need for rendering. The only button you need to hit is render to picture viewer here. Once you've done that, it'll go through and uh, render all the frames. Viewport rendering should be fairly quick. Um, so there's no need to worry about the time. Um, one other thing you can do, which I'm going to show you while this is rendering, is you can change the color of the studio backdrop by going to the reflectance channel, coming here into color, and you can edit the color that the background will be. Um, but that's just if you would like. Um,
All right, so that's been done. And next is to bring it over to After Effects. I already had After Effects open. Three ways to import to After Effects. Import File, right-click, Import File, or just double-clicking in the Project Panel. And let's go to where we saved our renders to. And I just need to select any one of these files. It doesn't matter which number, so long as PNG sequence is clicked on. I'll hit Import. And one thing you'll need to do is right-click Interpret Footage Main, and make sure this is 24. Um, yours most likely will be 30. Mine was set to 24 because I went to Edit, Preferences, Import, and I made sure to set my uh, preferred sequence footage frame per second to 24. This is normally d by default 30. And OK. Then I can right click and say new comp from selection. It'll be named whatever the name of the PNG sequence was. I also need to make a new composition. And I will name this one, you know, last name. So you'll want it to be your last name. And then uh, the name of uh, you want your MP4 project to be. So this could be robot swing fly, right? Because this is both swinging and flying. You can put them in the same project. And the duration, I'm going to make something way longer than I think I'll need, so 45 seconds. And I can then take my robot swing and place it in here. You'll also have a flying robot, but I'm going to just duplicate my swinging robot. And then um, one other thing to do, if uh, you so please, is to make a um, title card, which is, you know, good practice. Make a solid to make your background, make some text, a uh, title of your project, right? So uh, it could be Robot Swing Fly or whatever you would like. And then I'm going to uh, escape. What happened? Hmm. Robot swing fly. Oh well, that's okay. And I'll duplicate this. So Control D allows me to duplicate. And I want it to be, you know, my name. So in your case, you'll put it your name. All right. And I can select both of these. If I go to a line over here. I can line them centered only want the text and I can just center them all right and I only want them to be this long so as long as I place my playhead at the end of where I want it to be and then I hit alt and right mouse bracket that should cut it to the end of that and I can select all three, right click and pre-compose. This turns it into one layer that is a separate comp. I'm gonna call this title card. And when you have multiple selected, it does this by default. But if it's ever selected on this frame, you'll want to turn these on and hit OK. So now we have our title card, robot sing, and all that. I can select all three, right click, keyframe assistant, and sequence my layers. And I can turn on overlap and set how long I want the overlap to be. I want to go to effects and presets. And earlier I did this, so this is my a couple times recording this. Um, so I want fade in, fade out. And I want 12 frames. Um, and I'm going to select both, copy, and paste it to the other layers. And this should fade in and out your projects between each other on the layers. Um, next is if I hold down shift, it snaps me to the end of a layer when I get close to it. So I want to shift and snap to the end of this. I want to hit N, which is um, to put the end of the, set the end of the work area. And so my work area bar is this bar right here. So I want to right click on the work area and trim comp to the work area. So now my project is that long. 
So another thing to note, you see how I have left or robot swing selected here. If I go to composition, add to media encoder queue, it's going to put the wrong composition there. So I want to make sure I have my main um, composition that has everything in it selected. Then go composition, add to media encoder queue. And then I'll need to wait for media encoder open. And it will take some time. Um, I did pause this for a moment to give it some time to load. And you'll want to have, let's see, I'm going to delete that. You'll want to have for your submission, uh, probably YouTube 1080p. If I drag it over this uh, preset, you'll want to have that be what you render it as. If you want to share this on Slack, um, I made a preset called Slack No Audio. Um, I do have a video on how to put together put that together. Um, what that has is it is a YouTube 640 by 360 um, render, and it has uh, export audio checked off. And I then came down to the uh, bitrate and I turned it down so that way the uh, file size would be less but another thing is to come into here and still edit that further because you want the bitrate to be or you want the estimated file size down here to be like five megabytes or less so um, either way once I've made the preset you'll still need to select in there come down to the bitrate and lower it until it's less than five megabytes okay and so you can select where these save to. So if you didn't save the project like I did, your uh, renders for media encoder go into this, um, into the pro program file, which is, you know, good luck finding that. Um, so you'll want to select that link and go to whatever folder you want it saved to. My recommendation for projects is to make a class folder that has all your class projects in it, then make a project folder. And then inside that project folder, um, you can have little, like a folder for renders, a folder for, you know, if it's uh, both 3D and 2D, then maybe C4D and After Effects files. Um, and for uh, what your uh, final MP4s look like. That just helps with organization. Um, but you choose how many folders you want, maybe, it could be just, you know, class folder, project folder, render folders, and on the side of the render folders, have it be, you know, just all your projects uh, in C4D After Effects, not in folders, and like the MP4 render, not in a folder. However you'd like. Um, so I'm gonna make sure these are saved to that, since I don't necessarily have, I'm not taking this class anymore. <laughs> I can just save it to there and then uh, let it hit the green button and let it render out. Um, it should be fairly quick. And so because I named that composition, you know, my last name and the name I wanted it to be in the end, it stayed named this. If I didn't want it to be named this, I'd need to make sure to rename it when I'm setting where I'm placing it. I believe that should be all the key points to cover in this project. Um, remember, if you have any questions, you know, come by tutoring Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Sunday, 2 to 7 p.m. Um, I'll be there. All right, thank you. Bye-bye.